Um, all right. So Duke, um, can we start off by saying thank you for having me here? Fucking excellent. I love having you here. Uh, we used to be roommates and um, we had some deep conversations in the garage while I was passed out on the couch, <laughs> smoking a cigarette, almost burning the house down. It's all good. Like, uh, I, I, I'd do whatever to have that happen again. <laughs> if you ever find yourself in a need to live with a bunch of dudes, a new <laughs> podcast situation, I'm certainly down. Funny story about how I actually got to that house is um, Doobie actually put a, a like a listing up on Facebook that he was looking for a roommate and he was looking for dudes only. And I called him and I was like, bro, like, I can I can live there and he's like no but it's a bunch of guys and you'd be sharing a bathroom and like and you're a girl like it wouldn't work out and I'm like bro I will piss in the fucking backyard <laughs> <laughs> like trust me he's like you know what I know you would let's go <laughs> let's let's try it out so like that's Those are some of the best years of my life man. yeah I, so that's I mean, how that's how I got the room there I told him I would piss in the backyard if I needed to so anyways enough about me um okay so we're gonna talk about your business here and what like what is it called dude we were outside and we were we were smoking talking and she said i will help you with everything i'm gonna fucking clarify i'm gonna we're gonna have a great time here and then she got this notepad that doobie writes all the stuff for suburban boys on and she's out there fucking writing interview <laughs> questions i'm a little i'm a little trepidatious on this whole thing you know what's actually ridiculous is i think doobie might actually have better writing than me mm. because i'm looking at his his notes i'm looking at mine and i'm like how the fuck does that pigeon toed motherfucker have <laughs> better <laughs> he's honestly <laughs> drunk all the time so yeah you know. so it he's, is what it is. He's just gotten really good at it. Suburban Boys Podcast. Click in the show notes. Yeah. So, anyways, so what is what is the name? So, I'm going to be asking questions based on things that I don't know. And maybe your listeners do know. So, I'm going to get caught up. So, what is the name of your business? Um, the business name is Intimacy Liberation Army. Intimacy Liberation Army. What is it? I, L A I L A. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you're on here because you're intelligent. I I can I can uh, <laughs> deduct that right. Okay. Cool. Okay. So I L A. I like that. Do you have like a mantra for your business? Do you have like a slogan? Uh, like I know, like I watch like commercials and they're like celebrate celebrate <laughs> no i don't have a fucking jingle if that's what you're asking me or, or a, mon a mantra is not necessarily a jingle but like a jingle or a mantra could work but i feel like you need to have one of the two uh yeah i mean the the little tagline is we help men and women all over the world get over their mental roadblocks wait you so you help have... men and women yeah, yeah get over their mental roadblocks yeah so they can uh make dating fun make dating better and then at the very bottom, you're like, this may cause suicide and no, shit no. your pants. And <laughs> no, we don't, we don't have any. So, okay. So it's, it's a great um, learning lesson. It's a great thing to hear without having to have all those bad side effects. So this is like a really good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. May cause anal leakage. Yeah. Like. <laughs> you're just like, I want to cause my red patchy skin, but I... I also don't want to die of um, AIDS and um, yeah, 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 suicide. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like so the you know we're in the self help and the develop self personal development space, and so what happens is people who come in and really connect with our material, they're already kind of like Tony Robbins ish and like you know Grant Cardone, like they're already into that whole thing, so they're kind of on an upward spiral already. And they want to get their dating life handled, so okay, um, that's what that's the kind of clientele we end up attracting. And so, who are those people? Hmm? Who who are those people? Explain those people to me, please. Like the people who hire us are the people who are. But you you, you know, named names, and I want to know who are those people. What do you mean names? You named something Cardone. 
Oh, uh, Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, they're like big moguls in the personal development space. Okay, see, I have never heard of them before. Mm. Do you think your listeners have heard of them? And if they have, I apologize. Most of them, yeah. Okay, so. then I apologize. I'm trying to get up to speed here. Well, you're pretty personally developable. Developably. Developably? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you, don't, you don't read any of that stuff? Who's um, your, who's your okay, favorite my, motivational My people? last self-help book was Deepak Chopra. Mm. Yeah. Or um, like um, Untethered Soul. Okay. It's such a good book. It's a very good book. Yeah. I sound like such a fucking white, like just. Let's be fair. You are drinking White Claws on a podcast. And so <laughs> I sound so, so white <laughs> with like, oh, I'm so my problems are so bad. I need to. I need to read uh, the Untethered Soul. But no, it's a great book. It really is. Um, anyways, enough about me. Um, the next thing I wanted to ask you is, so, how many times do people ask you like about? Are you like that movie Hitch? That's literally every day. Every day. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. what I would think, right? So what do you say when people ask you, like, is this like the movie Hitch? Yeah, kind of. You just uh, say, yeah, uh, so kind of? The, the people who wrote that movie, they did all their research. Who with, wrote that movie, by the uh, way? Do you know? I don't remember the name. Okay. It's like some girl. Some uh, girl. <laughs> yeah, she like. Really? It was a girl? I think so. I, I, I w- it would seem like, of... I would guess that would be a guy who wrote that movie. Mm, I don't I don't know. We'll have to do some fact checking after the podcast. Yeah. Um, Doobie, get on that fact check, please. <laughs> <laughs> Not here, like always. Oh, uh, but... well, we'll figure it <laughs> out. Never hear what I need <laughs> <laughs> But fucking, uh, basically, the people who wrote the movie, did a bunch of research with the guys in my industry. Okay. And so back early on when I first started, the guys in the industry were all, they all only taught men. And right. so when they went out and they kind of canvassed the guys who were famous for it, there's this guy named David Wygant, and he's kind of you know 60-something now. But uh, they interviewed him a whole bunch, and they built Will Smith's character off of his oh, off of and, this person. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like a real person that existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. He didn't have a shelf. And then what though. the fuck happened to Will Smith, man? Mm. He's a Scientologist, right? That's what happens when you get caught up with the wrong bitch. Are you a Scientologist? I am not a Scientologist. Okay, what do you think about Scientology? I think uh, people need to follow somebody, and I'd rather be the followed than the follower. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good point. All right. So, so when somebody asks you, they say, "What do you do?" So, say somebody random come up comes up to you at a bar and they say, "I'm taking off my jacket." Sorry. Please do. Um. So, what do you do? Like in a very brief description, what do you tell them? So, I'm a dating coach and I work for three different companies. And so each company has a little bit different focus. So I serve the clients of that company whenever. You serve them? Yeah. Serve them. Serve. Yeah. yeah. This is on video, so we're going to catch all that. Oh, you saw that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah, No, anything it takes to get a nut, bro. No, I... um, Another dollar, another day. Come on. That's what I say. uh, One of them is a... my, My company is... Uh, basically dating and relationships, mm-hmm. dealing with personal boundaries, how to communicate, dealing okay. with dealing with problems and all that, you know, dealing with uh, See, that sounds arguments and shit. healthy because I know that there it's got to be like people on both sides of the spectrum that are like, oh, what you do is so cool. Like we, you, they look at it one way and there's got to be another group of people that are like, oh, are you teaching people to just like... You know, just hook up. And, Sometimes. You know, yeah. like, so I, I I, assume you probably hear the gambit from both sides. True. Yeah. And then a, one of the other country companies is called Limitless Mentoring, and it's a trauma release. So uh, people come in with a lot of fucked up issues. The last workshop we did, there's a couple of uh, guys who are special forces military, and they had a lot of issues with the trust in okay. people and women and whatever. And so we... We lead them through childhood trauma and deal deal with trauma release stuff from a perspective of sophrology, which is a Swiss self help psychological trauma methodology. And so um, those things get really deep, really crazy. And a lot of guys that come into kind of the pickup workshops, which is the other company, 
um, who they just want to go out and meet a bunch of girls because they're just afraid of talking to girls. Um, when they when they go out and they realize, oh, I can talk to chicks and they do like me, and and then I can get laid, but I'm, you know, I'm having problems with the relationship itself, and I'm having problems with being able to hold my own boundaries and be assertive, and I'm getting thrown around and taken advantage of. Then I'm like, then I suggest the the trauma release stuff, and then they go to the other the other workshops. See, that sounds important. You know, can I just say something? I wish there were more of you out there because there's I wear so, condoms, not there happen. are so many messed up people out messed up guys out there that I'm just it's overwhelming, honestly. For sure. Man Oh especially I, from the I L, I just the, realized the, what I wrote down here. Okay, but go on. Especially from like just the the lens of relationships themselves. Like the LGBT yeah. community I've had um, lesbian relationships. Girls will come. Wait, and... you've had a lesbian relationship? No, no, I've had girls with <laughs> lesbian relationships come seeking advice. And, I was um, like, tell, tell me how that works, please. Uh, well, uh, for the night, I identify as a woman. <laughs> and then I just do what I normally do. No, but um, like uh, communication and trauma problems and dealing with you know, assertiveness and boundaries and all this stuff that it's pretty universal across humankind. Right. Right. And so, uh, it gets a little crazy. We get a lot of guys cause I was a, a pickup artist coach for a very long time. That's what I, you see, this is where I was coming from is where people kind of get misconstrued of they having watched the movie hitch, like categorize you as a pickup artist. But it's, um, well, it's, in that it's, movie, it's it wasn't little, like that. But it's a little bit different than what you do. You're not trying to pick up people. You're trying to coach people into being just so, socially aware, right? Sure. Or, and or, mostly self-aware. Or, like, like, correct me if I'm wrong, right, though, but, like, Well, just, I, I do all of it. So I, I'm a veteran dating but coach are, are there, a long time. Are there cases where you're just, like, there's somebody that hires you, they're just like, I just want to absolutely i just uh, want to bang tens, i just bro. want i want somebody yeah. to see my little winky mm -hmm. and yeah, you're yeah. just like all right i want them to do whatever they tell me whatever i tell them yep i got this guy he's coming from um he's in bali right now and he wants to go to vegas in july and he's gonna pay me 6k to bang tens that's his fucking thing right tens so what <laughs> does he consider a 10 well that's what we got to figure out because generally what happens is these guys will be like bro I just want to fuck hot chicks, bro. I don't really give a fuck, man. <laughs> right? And then what happens is they show up and they're scared little bitches, right? Yeah, and he he'll say that, and then a twelve will walk by, yeah. and he's like, "Oh, she's yeah. too, she's her too left knee is higher than her right one. She's <laughs> yeah. not going to be good for babies." I'm like, what "The fuck are you talking?" You're about? like, "Do you <laughs> want babies or you <laughs> want to f?" I'm sorry. You want to see my little winky or? Right. Or what? And so generally what happens is those guys show up and by day two of a workshop, they like change their entire vision of what they wanted. Right. Because the reason that, that you want to be seen with a hot chick is, is usually status or it's the fact that you've never touched one before ever. Right. And, you know, whatever you think is hot, you thought was like a big scary monster. And then once right. you kind of get over that, you're like, oh shit, like I actually care about feelings and fuck <laughs> you know and so right. uh it it leads into it like we have a long um like customer journey it's like guys will come in thinking oh i want to get laid and then we can make that happen right and 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 so, then uh, sometimes fucking do five you, years later they're still working on their relationship problems here. oh that that leads me to my next question is do you get guys coming in saying i just want to f and then they leave this is an adult podcast and then you they, can talk however you want oh okay <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were weren't like sponsored by like anal lube or something, but like then um, then then <laughs> effing is on the docket. Uh, <laughs> do you ever get guys that come in and then say like I just want to fuck bitches and then they leave your program saying like I just want to cuddle? <laughs> like do you it's ever? It's usually not that. Do drastic. you ever have that transition? Um, it's usually not that drastic. Okay. They usually, they'll hook up with a couple of people. They, they, then... they know what they want and you're there to get them to their goal. Well, basically. I teach, I teach all the way along the journey. See, I have no problems with casual sex. Right. I have problems with dishonesty. I have problems with manipulation and lying and, and a bunch of things that hurt people on the way through. But if you can make it through the casual sex, um, yeah. gambit without 
fucking people up and, and you know, hurting their feelings and making them have false expectations, then go for it, man. Because there's plenty of girls out there who want to fucking hook up and have an experience and yes. then not be attached to it in a weird way. All you need is a little bit of chloroform um, and you're yeah, good to go. CHCL3. You can make that in chemistry. <laughs> yeah. No, but in all serious, I under, I totally understand what you're saying. And uh, so I want to know, what was your hardest client? Hardest? Well, like hardest meaning like what was the most like mind blowing? You're just like, I can't even believe this person is asking this of me. Like this guy is a lost cause. Like have you ever had somebody like that? Um. Well, I've had a lot of hard clients and, and they're all hard in different like ways. Like hard? Or just um, like hard? Nothing I've seen personally. Okay. Yeah. Uh, usually when I'm in the room, straight guys go soft. So yeah. <laughs> it is me, what me it is. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, Unless it's Louis C. That's why you're always hooking up with gay dudes. I know, yeah, right? Dude, yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, right yeah, now. so after yeah. I taught this guy, I said, I've made it. Uh -huh. I'm never going to have anything dip more difficult than this. Yeah. So this girl calls me. She's probably, what's up? I was going to say... Here I am, <laughs> your next difficult client. All right, I'm, <laughs> I'm down. Just kidding. Fucking but continue your story. We just got to figure out if you're financially able to handle it. That's, and we'll my, just that's my next. Sale. That's my next question. <laughs> Finish the story, though. All right. So okay. This girl calls me. She's probably in her mid fifties, right? And she says, she says, "Hey, mid fifties." Yeah, oh, yeah. She's like, "Hey, um, suck the new, suck the new fifteens, twenties." Uh, well, fifteens illegal in most countries, so maybe twenties. <laughs> 20s okay <laughs> so she's like uh my son uh needs dating coaching i said okay. okay and she's like he's a little difficult to work with i said um i've d i've worked with all sorts of people man and i've worked with a blind guy like fucking weird okay <laughs> like it, I've, I've done a lot so okay. i'm like no problem i'm excited where so this she's, is going <laughs> she's like okay so he's um adult functional autistic i said okay no problem and then I'm getting flashbacks. And though. then here's the deal. I want to pay you for a one on one for seven days. OK. I said, no problem. I can make that happen. And she said, and we're going to go to Las Vegas. OK. I said, OK. Why are we going to Las Vegas? And she said, there's a Star Trek convention. <laughs> you know what? But there's a lot of big titted women Absolutely there. Absolutely not. You'd no? think so. Comic Con. I mean, yes. I've never done it, but Anime I've convention? been to I've been to E three. Yes. I've never E three? Yes. Never been to the Lost Star Vegas Trek convention? convention. No. They're just all dressed as like um There's Captain barely any Picard. Girls there. There's barely any girls there. <laughs> the girls are dressed as Captain Picard with like bald heads and like or they have those they're all like, lesbians just they, like in no they suits. have those like um what do they call it ferengi or yeah whatever. yeah like, no and i know yep. i know what Makeup. you're talking about Cur uh, cl i don't cling on right yeah so there's there's probably like i saw at the convention itself i saw six girls and that was it and everybody else okay. was just like talking weird languages and, and whatever <laughs> And so the guy basically wanted to find a girl who was in the spectrum. But Trek. so, but he was kind of on. He was on the spectrum. He was on yeah. the spectrum. Okay. And. Uh, but that's kind of that actually melts my heart a little bit. That's kind of sweet that like he knew what he wanted, and he had a goal, mm -hmm. and that you took him to do that goal. That actually is such a sweet thing for you to do. Yeah. That actually melts my heart. And uh, his mom was like, I don't care if we have to Did he tell him. you why why that was like his thing or he was just. Well, he just really loved Star Trek and that's really all the answers he needed. That's like. So he he was probably very easily coached, right? Like. No. No. No, no, no. Oh, wait. So this was your hardest one, right? Yeah. Oh, OK. We're, we're on the hardest one right now. OK. So he has this value system. OK. That was like just. Star nutso. Trek money. <laughs> Dude, no, it was like a value. He's like, can I, can I please pay you in, in <laughs> whatever Star Trek? I don't know. I don't watch credits. Star Trek. Can I in these Star Trek credits, please? <laughs> no, he had this value system of, of like how to treat women, right? And he was like, oh god, never was he fly. was he bad? No, but um, he on day two when we went up going to Miracle Mile, it was like a, a mall in Vegas in the mm -hmm. Planet Hollywood. 
and he because he he didn't really have social etiquette like he was well, I said you you got to talk would, to that girl yeah and because we do a lot of infield wow, stuff wow that right? sounds like such a fucking uphill battle dude yeah but he did a bunch and he got phone numbers and he set up dates and it was it was fine it but was like normal client can i say something that would be the one person that i would work hardest for oh yeah because i knew that like you know some people are born with psychological damage or whatever yeah generational but trauma somebody born with a physiological damage like that i have so much empathy for i would I would work so hard to like help this person out. Yeah. No, I worked my balls off. And that's so cool that you did that because like I'm the same way. I'd be like, you did not pick this. You did not choose to be like a dick or, or ostracized. And like that's that's actually really cool that you did that. So I said, go talk to that blonde girl. She was coming out of H&M. Was and she cute? Yeah, she was cute. And, but was she the was reason she, I told her to go talk was she to him, on the spectrum or was she normal? I don't know. But the reason I told her to go talk to him, talk to her, to her was because he like did like multiple glances at her and tried to hide it from me because he knew I would tell him to like to go. Right. And, right. So he was interested and that's why I told him to go. OK. Right? But he was kind of like pussyfooting around. Right. And so then she goes over with her friend. She's going to the ATM. Right. And so he rolls up. And he like straight creeps from the side <laughs> by the ATM, and she's trying to pull money out, and like this guy oh, is, no. like, is like oh, fuck no. it, <laughs> and uh, she like is all fucking scared or whatever, and uh, she kind of like bustles off, and he stops. He's like, hey, I want to talk to you, and and then she's like, no, 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 and she like ran, like basically ran, and I was like, I was like, all right, and he's like, what went wrong there? <laughs> I said, you. Should probably not just like creep girls out. On no, the ATM, yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, but what I said was that what he heard was, "You are the biggest creep ever, and there's no hope for you." Oh, you said that to him? No, that's not what. I, not so what I said. Okay. I said you should probably not creep creep girls out at the ATM. Like let's let's fucking yeah. Back but that the, that's what I even not being on the spectrum. I would hear the same thing. I would probably misinterpret that as Brittany you just creeped that person out you blew it you are a loser right you're scary right. like what and that was a very big teaching moment for me okay <laughs> but he literally ran away from me in the mall like did he just like left yeah and I've done that before you've run away from me in the mall <laughs> you're slow I can catch you I've gotten slower <laughs> <laughs> so I I can find him, and you couldn't find the seat, dude. Oh it, my god! So his mom calls me like an hour later. Oh, this he's like, "What did like you say to my such son?" A <laughs> so what did you say to my son? And I was like, "I was like, I just said we should probably not creep girls out at the ATM." <laughs> I didn't mean. I didn't mean like he was a creep. I'm not laughing. Anyway, I'm not laughing, dude. It, so I met up with him and his mom. We had this little fucking like mediation conference. Oh we no! We were like on day two, day oh, three. No. It was like okay. early. And uh, and he's like, yeah, no, I would never fucking creep anybody out. I'm not that person. You fucking told me that, and I hired you to be a coach. And he's like, fucking super mad. Uh, all right. I did hit on a special needs person one time. Nothing wrong with that. And it was very. I was like, that guy's so hot, and I was talking to him, and my cousin's like, that person's special needs, and I was like. Yeah, it checks out. You're like still hot though. <laughs> He's still really hot. He was, but he was so nice to me. Mm. He was so nice. He didn't talk back. He doesn't know who you actually are. Yeah. He didn't talk back. He just let me say whatever I wanted to say. It was, it was very nice. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'm happy you have that. Maybe you should explore that more often. But, so, it it but, is a spectrum. But this is gonna lead it into my next segue. But I want you to finish a story. Okay. Okay. Fine. Anyway, so we got everything patched up, okay. but um, it was just moment after moment like that through the whole fucking week oh my god and because i had to pull him out I, of the star trek I, conference to go to other places because there were no girls at star trek, star trek conference there's just the big tittied girls the big not even that they didn't have the big titty like dude like like the comic-con the anime conferences girls everywhere 
That's what I'm saying. It's like that's Star Trek you, conference, no girls. Yeah. Girls don't watch Star Trek. Right. They watch Game of Thrones, Star Wars, Mandalorian. Girls love Pedro Pascal. <laughs> Any <laughs> anywhere <laughs> Pedro Pascal is. That that should just be like your new business model. Be if, Pedro Pascal. Just do whatever Pedro Pascal would do. Right. What would what what is the initials? W W P What would my P B do? <laughs> Wait, Pedro. <laughs> it is P <pee-pee>. P. <laughs> so W W P D. What would P P do? What would Pedro Pascal do? All right. That should be like your new mantra. This is a dating podcast, but we're we're, we're edging into. I just uh, think that I just think that um everybody's obsessed with him right now, and if Pedro Pascal told you to do something, you will just do it. Yeah, like he's just amazing. All right, all right. Well, now W W Felix W W P P D. It sounds that kind of sounds like a birth defect. I've got P P D D. They got pills for that. I got PPDD. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is going to lead me to my next question. Wait. So that was your hardest client. Yeah. yeah. Emotionally, right? as a coach. I had a Not like time. hardest, but like the hardest client you've had to deal with. Do you want to meet my hard clients? I'm starting to think that like I might need to be like. They're too emotionally adjusted for you. I think I, I think, think I would eat them up alive. I think I would eat them up alive. I'd be like, they they might eat you too. And they might we eat teach me. That. They yeah. might eat me, and I don't think I'm ready for that. Um, okay, so now this shift completely the other way. <laughs> Do you have like a complete success story that you would like to talk about, like somebody that you introduced or a client that you transformed? They picked up the right person. They got married or just just met the right person. They just came out of their shell. Just something that you never thought would happen happened. Just like a what's a crazy transformation that you've witnessed? Okay, well, I'm that's like, what everybody wants to see is like a fucking crazy the transformation story. The what was like that old show in like the early aughts, like um. They would send somebody in for like two months and like do all this surgery and they would like change their face and their body and they'd be like, hey, d- extreme hey, makeover. husband. Yeah. It, yeah. Extreme makeover. Yeah. Hey, husband, do you love me now that I have fake tits? She's and- like, I liked you how you were before, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a story like that? Though? So I have a couple, uh, but I'm only telling But one. just tell me your top favorite one, um, please. Because I've been teaching for like 12 years, and so I've had like 600 one-on-one s- students, and so I got a lot of good stories. Yeah, but did you say 601 students? 600-ish uh, one-on-one one students. Oh, I thought you said 601. I was like, that's I taught a lot very of group specific. Stuff too, okay. But but definitely uh, one-on-one students. Okay. Um, and I think one of the early guys... Um, we went out together. He ended up. He he thought he had a big. So wait, ego. wait. This is the, the like, the craziest cool story, right? And it's not the craziest cool story, but it's, it's no, pretty I'm, successful, right? This I want to know like the craziest coolest. If you get me on a crazy ass cool story, it'll take twenty fucking minutes. So no, no, no. I'm you kinda, need to you need to <laughs> yeah. like give me like uh I'm ADD as you know. Give me like the, over here. I'm trying to tell a story. Oh oh oh. oh. <laughs> Fuck it. Is that a whistle? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Squirrel. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, 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 in in a five minutes or less, wrap up your most successful transformation. I used to hang out with this guy, and did, he thought, and, and and wait, and did they get married? And did they have kids? And did they live happily ever after? Or is this all just a fucking farce? Go. 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 I used to hang out with this guy. Okay. And did you fuck him? He had a big ego. No. Okay. Sorry. I never had sex with a man. All right. Sorry. Um, not that I wouldn't. <laughs> it just hasn't been the right thing yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe when I get old. There has anyway, to be a woman any, involved. Anyways. <laughs> 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 <Fuck it. laughs> 
<laughs> I, I don't. I, yeah. I just, a, a, no. Anyways, tell me. Your... I don't think I could stay hard. You know, I'm 44 now. Wait, but could you stay hard? Oh, okay. Can I? Can I? Can I segue really quick? You can do whatever you want. This is your I'm, podcast. I'm gonna segue really quick. I was listening to a different podcast, and I felt like I'm not a big sports fan. I'm not, a, but I don't like sports. Okay. I don't. I don't. I like playing sports. That's I don't. Sports. Wa- I don't watch sports. Oh my god, sports! <laughs> but I was listening to a podcast, and there's sometimes where I'm like screaming at the radio like blah 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 this is my opinion and i'm like oh my god i get it now like when like people are watching like whatever the patriots or the raiders and they're like why didn't you throw the fucking ball to like this fucker you know and i'm like why are they getting so angry and i get it now you know between watching survivor and and listening to podcasts i'm like and pedro pascal and pedro pascal i'm like why did you fucking give that person the fucking him hidden immunity idol you fucking loser or like you know so i'm anyways finish telling your story but okay. ed- edit that part out though yes ma'am. okay Love all you. right so I, I used to hang out with this guy and he had a big fucking ego mm-hmm. right and he thought that he was a, like a master pickup artist okay and so he you know back in the day i used to run like massive groups of people I would send a text message, 30 people that show up to the bar, we get free shots. Like, it was like. Was like, like this, I, like Brian Jonestown or what? I don't know about all that, but I was, <laughs> I was definitely a social hub. I was a super big social butterfly. And as I got older, I kind of like limited my circle. But um, he would always want to come hang out because there were always girls around uh, because I was like a practicing, like every night go out, pick up artist guy. So, like, I would go out and like have all the conversations and open everybody and invite everybody, everything, right? So, he was, he always wanted to be around. But he thought that he was too good for coaching. However, after every night, we'd debrief, and he would, like, I would do what I would, because I was interning at the time, so I wasn't, like, a professional yet. And what he would do is he would ask me a bunch of questions and debrief just like we did, you know, in in the professional thing. Right. He He was basically, like, using me for free. And, you know, it was great. You know, we were friends, but he was a little, like, subversive, you know. He, like... He wanted to keep his ego up and not be vulnerable and all the stuff we teach now is like, you know, vulnerability and honesty and assertiveness and all this shit. But back then he was just like, okay, what's the right pickup line for this kind of girl? And what, you know, when, when she says this, then how do I respond so I can get over her defenses and like all this kind of shit. Right. All right. And I remembered what I was going to say now, but keep going. (laughs) And so anyway, he, he ended up hanging out with us for the summer and he would just constantly just, just build his repertoire Mm -hmm. and, uh, he eventually, uh, I had, I brought this girl home and she was super pretty and I was super into her and I was a little like, Oh, oh God, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like right here. Right here. I can hear you. <laughs> and, uh, no, this is before you. And oh, you know, shit. I had never... is there anything before me though? Really? <laughs> I mean, not, not in perspective, but like. You know, when you showed up on the scene, you definitely changed the game. <laughs> but she... Um, God, I forgot it already. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, hey, cheers me, motherfucker. Cheers. I do, I do remember. I was just kidding. Mm. So um, he ends up... He's like, you know what? I'm going to take this girl. And I'm like... Take her. I'm like, I really into her so he's like yeah but you're like fucking got abundance you're like a pickup dude like you can do whatever you want best guy wins and i'm like <sighs> it's like it sounds like a renaissance fair like you guys are on <laughs> jousting <laughs> horses like larping <laughs> yeah you guys are larping on horses just like all right last one standing. take the maiden <laughs> i guess i'm still stuck on like the like uh the star trek shit you know yeah that's what i just now imagine every one of your clients are just like on this no. level <laughs> not, not all like that sorry i just still stuck on the imagery so he fucking ends up like he's he's at this point he'd probably quote unquote stolen multiple girls from me at this point stolen Be- because i didn't care like i was just like like you know, if she's into you, she's into you. Like, I don't give a shit. But she, yeah. he wanted the fucking conquest. Like, oh, fucking. Yeah. I beat Duke tonight, right? So, whatever. Anyway. Okay. So, 
he uh okay dragon slayer yeah yeah crush <laughs> it yeah get your shield oh man oh, your shit. fucking armor so shiny so he fucking takes his girl home and then she's like one of these like i want to have babies have a big family blah 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 Oof. and i'm like watch out bro like you took her home and you got your conquest bro but she's gonna fucking wife you up fast dude. is she gonna poke holes she's gonna poke some holes dude. is she gonna poke the holes so anyway is she that type of girl she didn't even have to poke holes because he he had a big old ego but oh his ego poked the holes it fell through because he didn't actually he didn't actually want all the status that he thought he did he just wanted to be loved right and she did love him so Everything was great. So she ended up fucking wearing him down and getting him to, you know. Wearing him down. Yeah, because he wanted to be like this big fucking pimp or whatever. But that's okay. false. <laughs> really quick, I just remembered, remembered what I was going to say. After your after your thing, though. You write it down right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. going to forget. Yeah. Write it, write it with non-Britney writing, though. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don't use cursive. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm just writing Twitter porn, really big letters. Okay. okay. Twitter porn. All okay. right. So anyway, anyways, keep going. Long story short, he ends. She ends up like they end up falling in love for sure. And he would talk like. And this oh, is one no. of your clients, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And he would talk like, oh no, like uh, I don't know, I'm still open. Blah 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 blah. Open. What does but, that mean? Like he's open. Like, you know, I'm, you know, if somebody better comes along. I'm chill. But he, he was not chill, dude. He fucking was into her, Ugh, and he just didn't want to show I it. I hate when people say that. What? Oh, I'm open. Uh, if 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 I was dating, a, I'm literally if I, right if here. I was saying, if oh, sorry, if I was seeing a guy and they're like, I'm open to see what comes along better. I'd be like, Yeah, you could see your way. Fucking out! Like I sound so dorky saying that, but I'm sorry. Like you if you, to the mic though. I feel like if you don't know, see, like then me and you, ha- right off. Me and you have such different like takes on this, but like I'm like, okay, if you don't know right away that you like me, I'm just like, bye. I knew right away that bye. I liked you. Bye. And I still like you, which no, is, I know. I'm just which saying is like, better than most bitches that have ever happened in my life. But I'm saying like I do that with any guy. I'm just like, if you don't like me right away, I'm just Fuck like, right off. Bye. If you can't hand my, handle me at my White Claw. <laughs> oh, wait, no, wait. What is it? You can, If you can't handle me at my Four loco, you can't handle me at my Truly. <laughs> yeah. Do you even drink Truly? I don't even really drink that much anymore. All right. Well, but true, I do think truly is better than white claw. I think I, I think I've proven over the years that I can handle you at your. You can worst. handle me at yeah. any point. Yes. But anyway, so anyway, long I, I story keep... short, this okay, motherfucker go, go. falls in love. Anyway, he's um, they end up getting married, or they end up he ended up proposing, and and then he's like, I want you to be. He wants you. Yeah, he wants me. He wants you. I want you to be the officiant for my wedding. Wow, have you ever done that before? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I got my I got my reverend ship. For from the some internet. reason, I can just picture like so many people asking you to do that for them. Yeah. You're like Dude, just I have a list. such a like uh, solid dude. That's just like so like I don't know. I I could see a lot of people asking. Well, thank you, to do you that. for the compliment. Yes, I don't even believe in marriage. I know that just which is crazy, <laughs> which is crazy. But yeah, so he wanted to get married and he wanted me to officiate. So yeah. I ended up officiating their wedding, and then they end up having a baby. Can and, I ask and you? They ended up getting a house and they're fucking living happily ever after. Still, really quick, can I ask you? Side side note, what did you say in their wedding that made your speech a little bit different than anybody else that would have officiated that wedding? Uh, Did you say anything cool or radical? Yeah, I definitely fucking best man speeched the reverend speech. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Like, I don't, I like, you know, you, so I've known you know, you both like, for a the, of you years. know, the typical, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, blah, 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 blah. Did you say something cool that you're like, yeah. this is why you had me marry you guys? Like, no, what? no. I was like, I was in love with this girl, but she was obviously in love with Wait, you. Wait, so <laughs> you said that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that. I did say that. It's on video. No, you did not. Yeah. That 
kicks ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holy crap, dude. Did you really? Yeah. At their wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was part of my speech. Yeah. That's badass. You know, that reminds me of like my dad. Honestly, my dad, at his wedding, I uh, was like 12 years old and he was just like, I met her at the strip club and she was the only woman that had her clothes on and my mom's like over here and my stepdad's over here and I'm just like, and here's my daughter, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> you're like, hi, hi. <laughs> so I'm all about really inappropriate wedding speeches. So I, I love that. Hell yeah. I love that. So that was a story. Now you can get to whatever point. Okay. You to make. I have more points here. See, like I told you, we we're gonna get on tangents here. But, I love um, your tangents. Um, the next one, I here. See, I'm speaking to the microphone. It's very. It's turning me on. Uh, <laughs> do you have any advice for me? For you. I'm okay. So I'm gonna be 35 this year. Oh, gross. Gross, right? <laughs> very gross. I'm single. I live by myself. I'm successful. You do have that in, amazing cat. I'm successful in business. I have the most amazing cat named Winston. I'm, I, you know what's weird is I have not been able to hang out with guys recently. Um, I find everybody icky. Mm. Is that normal? Is it normal to find everybody icky? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what normalcy or is. is or, or is that just I have not met my person, but like all of a sudden, everybody seems icky. Well, what I will it's tell weird. you weird is that I'm just like, oh, get away from me. I just don't. there's a there's a lot of I'm spots like, in your life. I'm just like, like oh, sorry. Every time like there's like a guy that like slides into my dms or it just like even pay, like is not even being like so much like offensive but just like hammers me with it just like oh let's hang out let's hang out let's hang out i'm just like bro you are making me feel icky you know like is it me going through a phase or like, what? What's your take on that? Like, what's your advice for me? Like, well, what I will tell you mm -hmm. is that you're you have gone through, you know, at thirty five, and you've worked in the bar scene, and you've yeah. had a lot of encounters, right? <laughs> what I've had a lot of, you know, encounters, whatever. You have a lot of experience. Icky that, encounters. You've had a lot of experience that has uh, kind of set you up for a, a pattern. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is on your best day, you will have an ideal. You'll be like, I want to go and, and meet somebody like this or, you know, I want to I want to trust in the, you know, that we'll find something new, novel, exciting that will also be stable and emotionally compatible or whatever. Right. But on your yeah. worst days, you're like, I know what works. I want to fucking just get my needs met or, you know, run the fucking system again because it seems okay, right? Dude, and I have been celibate for like the last six months. I had a dream last night and even texted Doobie this. I fucked a girl ghost. Not even just a ghost, but a <laughs> female ghost. Girl ghost, bro. I banged a female ghost and I was like, is that a sign that I need to get Fuck! Like I was like, that's bad. I'm like, I woke up just like that ghost was kind of hot, <laughs> and it was a girl ghost. I'm feeling this ghost right now. Like, and I was like, am I getting possessed? Am I just like I've never gone this long with being single, and it's just, it's kind of made me feel empowered, but like, it's not like me. So right. you you know me. I've always had like a boyfriend or a, somebody I'm somebody interested in. Space. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and now that I've been like doing things for myself, I've like a this is my own thing. I have much higher standards now. Go like I um Yeah, so I had a dream that I fucked a girl ghost. And does that mean <laughs> 
I don't know what that I don't know what that means. Um, I have also fucked a girl ghost. Really? Okay. Awesome. Maybe our Just girl ghost is it the same ghost? Maybe that'd Dude, be sick. We are Eskimo. Are we Eskimo okay. brothers? <laughs> 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 you want to do karate in the garage? <laughs> Eskimo brothers. We fucked the same girl ghost. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't put it past us. Really? No, that, I wouldn't either. Okay, so that's what. Uh, L- let that, me fucking answer your question. Oh wait, wait. I, I wanted to skip Jesus through that, Christ. but go ahead. Don't I'm, talk about me anymore. I'm ADD, so but if you want to say something Look, about so it, so you've had a pattern, and you go back to the pattern that you know mm-hmm. because you can you can predict the outcome. So sometimes that is very accurate that you picked up on that. Sometimes, <sighs> you know, new novel experiences that could change your whole life. It for the better mm-hmm. are more scary than what you know already the scarier you know. than a female ghost that's fucking me okay, first off <laughs> she's fucking you she's not that scary <laughs> she was kind of you know scary. she's got good taste she was scary hot okay <laughs> fuck yeah yeah um if, if we could figure out how to summon those i had somebody in my dms tell me that like people had put a spell on me and she wanted to clear it up <laughs> all right i just got chills Ugh. she wanted 199 dollars to do it so not 200 like, just 199 yeah i think okay. it's i think it converts better okay okay let me, <laughs> let, let me get let me get through these points now okay so there so Brittany, the, the an- love life that answered my question there is no hope for me yeah yeah uh you have 11 minutes to finish okay i can finish in way less than 11 minutes right now so um more than two and a half Yes. Okay, we might have a thing going on. All right, so I, I want to kind of like bring in a little bit of pop culture into this conversation. Okay. Is that okay with you're you? Fuck me up is what you're going to do. Twitter. Do you porn. know? Oh, you just reminded me of what I wanted to talk about. Twitter. I literally have it written on my <laughs> fucking thing. How did you know I was going to talk about that? Do it. Go. Did you see this or did you just guess I was You gonna... told me fucking 10 minutes ago. I'm oh. Always- I was listening to another podcast. It was like a Lifeline podcast with Chris Delia or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this chick, and I wanted so badly to like call in and be like, give them a piece of my mind. And I wish I could, but like, I was like, Duh. okay. So this chick, she's like, oh, I've been dating this guy for two and a half months and everything's perfect. He's like the love of my life. We're going to get married. We, we're, we, 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 we match up like and our, our chemistry matches up physically we match up our sex life matches up like that's sick you're sick um everything matches up like he's like my my dream hero blah 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 but she goes well one night i was putting in the work you know putting in the work <laughs> and okay. she looks up and she says He's on fucking Twitter porn. That's two months into the relationship. And she's she's like, oh, did I do something wrong? And they're all like, well, the only thing they could say was like, why is he on Twitter porn? There's so many better porn sites. But I'm like, yes, there is so much wrong with that. In my In my opinion, would you disagree? I'm saying... Yes, if he's looking at porn while you're blowing him two months into the relationship, there is something very fucking wrong have with so that. So much chemistry. He just loves envisioning other women. Well, that's in my that's face. that's yeah. how she started the conversation. Was like, I'm sure that Chris Delia's podcast blew that out in fucking length. No, no, no. What they they digress to? Uh, well. Why is he on Twitter porn? There's so much better porn sites. And I was like, bro, I love your Avoiding pod- the question. I love your <laughs> podcast and I know you're a sex addict, Chris, but you didn't answer the question. No, you're n- avoiding it. That guy needs fucking help. Like if you like at least if you if you're two months in, at least give her like the heads up. Like, no pun intended. Like, hey, just to let you know, you're... And she didn't say what she was saying putting the work in was, but unless you're on the spectrum, you know what it means. Sure. Uh, 
yeah i would just where, where? i would just want like the respect of being like hey tap on the head <laughs> hey hey just to let you know and i'd be like huh just to let you know just to let you know i'm gonna look up some twitter porn and i could either be like no, the fuck you ain't. And you'd be like, no, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, oh, no, fuck you not. You're not fucking doing that. Or I could be like, fuck yeah, go ahead. But hey, ask me first and right. see how I feel about it, right? Like, am I wrong to think that? Or that's what I wanted to shout at that person. And I was like, you guys are just giving her the wrong advice yeah. right now. I kind of feel like uh, porn is a part of you know sexuality of course and this is where me and you always differed i think porn is so bad for men and so like breeding some like unrealistic breeding. breeding some unrealistic expect breeding some shit some unrealistic shit that no women can really uh, fucking handle that's my i've met a lot of women <laughs> and i would disagree with that but um porn is obviously Ooh, that's why i'm talking to you we are talking to figure out that i'm right and you're wrong sure uh-huh uh, you've always been right every time mm -hmm. as long as i've known you that's why this chicken's here that's why the chicken's here okay Wait, before we leave. Hey, wait, can I fucking answer the question? Answer the or question and I be, answer the question <laughs> and then I have one last question for you. All right. Okay. So I believe that porn is a part of sexuality. It may be Oh my god. It may be uh, a part of some sort of deviant sexuality, depending on what your morals are or whatever. But I look at porn like this. I'm literally listening to you tell me about porn while I'm looking at that picture right now. <laughs> and I cannot take my eyes off that picture. Hold on. Doobie's podcast has this. Uh, we gotta, we got to show it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> again, anyway. Um, what was I saying? So, look, I think porn says horrible, unrealistic expectations for sex. Yes. Uh, I think that action movies set horrible, unrealistic expectations for heroism. No, no, no. You can absolutely drive a Ferrari onto a yacht, a moving yacht. Have you done that before? No, but in Fast can and you, the Furious 3, they did it. Can you and fucking they, accelerate over a median and hit a helicopter like in Die Hard 5? 100%. That yes. is doable. It is doable. But... And there are actual women in porn who can get into the weird ass fucking positions for whatever. But what I'm saying is intimacy has so many fucking facets besides sex. And uh, if you're watching an action movie and you think that you're a fucking hero, great. If you're watching a porn thing and you think you're a fucking porn star, great. But is this what Doobie has sex with now? I don't know what Doobie has sex with. And I'm I don't want to touch it. Ask. I don't want to touch it. No, but I think you're right. I think you're right. And um, I think that uh, consent uh, for, not consent, but like uh, having, yeah, no, of course having consent. the fucking, oh, of course consent, but um, having the fucking, being on the same page as far as intimacy is concerned and what you're sharing together, you know. Um, I've had girlfriends where I would watch porn with them and we would both get turned on at the same time. See, I but had, you know, all that kind that's of shit, what I'm saying right? though. If you are on the same page, Porn can be beautiful, but I've had boyfriends where they're like obsessed with like a certain porn star. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I don't want to have sex because I'm just jacking off to this fucking like Dallas Missing Dallas Buyers baby, whatever missing her name. the point. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I missing? No, no. I'm saying that guy's missing the point. Oh, I thought I was missing the point. I was like, okay, tell me the what the point is then. Uh, I... I'm like, but that's my whole thing is why do you need the porn if you have the girl sucking on your winky? Yeah, sucking on the winky. Well, if you ever called my dick a winky, I don't know. I just don't know if you're trying to get like advertisers. So I'm just like, I will not talk about, I will call the dick the winky. 
Yeah. Just to make sure that you're okay. Um, I'm okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you have a little, there's some psychological stuff in there. But, <laughs> uh, I will, I will tell you that, that I think that actual sex <laughs> is way better than virtual sex. And if you primarily use, um, the virtual sex to accentuate your love life, uh, you're missing the point. Yes, I agree. I, but you know what? Um, ever since I got sober, which is like, I get it weird because I'm drinking right now, but I have actually became so much less of a hoe. I will not have sex with anybody, do anything sexual. Like, it's crazy. No. Um, but, like, it's so much more, like, of an emotional thing now. Yeah, of course. Yeah, intimacy is important. And as you mature. Yeah. And, and like like I said, I'm, I'm maybe 35. It's not, it has nothing to do with your age. Your, I don't know if it, yeah. mental I don't think it has to do, has yeah. Grown up. It, it has to do with, like, your, you're right, your, my mental stage <laughs> And um, all right, you have one more question. We got to wrap it up. Okay, last question. Last question. Um, oh, oh, oh. Last question is to wrap this all up. Speaking and tie- of wrapping it up, wrap it up, motherfuckers. Anyway, yes, do that, please. Um, I have you ever heard of Scandaval? <laughs> What's a Scandaval? <laughs> you haven't. I have not. Oh, then you can't answer my question. Oh, I'm sorry. What's it like? It was it like? just a little bit of a pop culture intervention here i have i have i have zero pop culture Ugh. i talk to real people okay okay like let me put it into perspective for you then okay say you are dating somebody for 10 years and you both think you are in a monogamous relationship okay this so i'm giving you the synopsis of a like a a reality Ask TV show. for a friend. No, this is a, this is a reality show synopsis. Okay. This is actually going on right now. It's like the biggest news. I don't even know how you haven't heard of it, but I'm on top of it. So. Hey, that's the only thing you're on top of right now. I'm on top of. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on top of it. I got you. Um. So basically this couple, they're a reality couple. They've been together for 10 years. They have a house together. They bought a house together. And they have had a best friend named Raquel. Fucking Raquel. It's fucking, always Raquel. I fucking hate Raquel. Anyways, she's been fucking the boyfriend the whole time. Yeah. So what's the question? <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere with you with this one. You're probably like, yeah, and and no, I think that if they both thought that they were monogamous, then they the motherfuckers well, cheating. Obviously, <laughs> I don't know behind closed doors, but from what the media portrays, is that they are both like they were both monogamous. Mm-hmm. But this is like the biggest scandal out there right now. So I had to bring in a little bit of pop culture. Like this is breaking news right now. Literally, none of so, my clients ask me about pop culture or Bravo. Well, I am. So, in case they do, you'll be like, wow, my good friend Brittany. My good friend Brittany. She informed me about the Bravo crisis that's currently happening. And, and oh my In case God. they do ask you about it, now you know. We have a fucking opinion. I'm going to watch so it So, what's the opinion? Here's my opinion. I think that if you make a promise <laughs> yes. and then you break it, you lack integrity. Thank you. See, I don't care if you fuck around, but as long as you guys knew that going in or had a conversation about it or just are just be on the same page. Yep. Don't That's blind the fucking theme of this whole don't podcast. Don't blindside don't blindside somebody. Sorry, I've been watching so much Survivor lately. I've been watching <laughs> <laughs> so much Survivor like seasons like way past, but don't blindside somebody. If you guys both agree to be in a loving, monogamous relationship, do that. But if you don't want to do that, talk about it. And yeah. then don't fuck with Raquel. Don't, don't watch Twitter don't porn. Don't fuck with anyone named Raquel. Raquel. 
Don't fuck with Twitter porn. That's what we learned today. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think the um, I think the theme of today was stay on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that was. And this is um, Doobie's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that was my good friend Brittany, and I'm I'm happy that you were on this thing. And Thank I think you. we need to do this on a regular basis. I agree. <laughs> I think that um, not only are you a super hot chick, but you have fucking good things going on in your brain. Thank you. And so if we do this more often, I think I'll get lots more subscribers. And if you aren't subscribed to this thing, please hit subscribe in the iTunes store. It helps us. Wait, Uh, hold on. Here. What? Oh, 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 hold on. We got to move the camera. Oh yeah, we got subscribe, the subscribe, 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 subscribe. Yeah, that's that's literally the fucking <laughs> lamest twerk I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm I'm white. Can I just remind you that I'm white? Yeah, and <laughs> she 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 reads the untethered soul. So I do. Um, but yeah, I do. Thanks for thanks for listening, and uh, we're gonna try to have Brittany back on uh, as soon as fucking possible because this is a great time. Thank um, you. Do you have anything to plug while you're here? Like a like a butt plug or uh no like really quick did you know for the longest time when I was growing up do you know what I thought a butt plug was tell me I thought a butt plug was like people that had a lot of anal sex that their butt just leaked out poop so they plugged it up with the blood <laughs> you should have lived with that I thought <laughs> that's what a butt plug was for the longest time anyways right. yeah that's that's Thanks all, for I, that's to all I gotta say Liberation Army Podcast if you love, love you. Brittany uh, add her on Instagram you can find her and, oh at Brittany underscore LaRue yeah yeah Brittany LaRue and uh Please join us next week. Oh, it's B R I T T N Y. Sorry, nobody spells it like Brittany. that. Brittany. B R I T T N Y. Yeah. So yeah. thanks for joining us. Uh, talk to us next week on the next uh, podcast, and I will see you guys later. Stay awesome. Stay lit, bitches.